Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Amy's Inspiration Station. Thank you for tuning in on the Altenew, either Facebook or on our YouTube channel. It is so nice to have you here today, and I really appreciate you taking a little time out of your Monday to come and craft with me today. And our focus today is on the paint of flower. Uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to do the best I can, everybody. It's the uh, Gerber. Ger this is this is my Boston accent coming into play at the moment. I can't. There's too many R's and too many vowels. So let me try one more time. Gerbera Revolution. I really, really, really want to um, do a little bit of uh, my Boston accent in there with there's a lot of R's. Sorry about that. I'm doing my best. We're just going to call this daisy flowers today. Okay, everybody, I can do that one with my accent. These are some daisy flowers. And they're absolutely adorable. There's two together. And this is the, uh, the stamp. Oops, sorry about that. This is the uh, stamp set that we're talking about. So you get these two big, huge daisies, uh, right combined together with these nice big fat leaves. And then there's these really, really adorable sentiments. And you can even take these sentiments and you can stack them together in order to kind of like make your own sentiment. So really, really great little uh, little stamp set today. So um, it's so nice of you all to be here. Oh, hi, Catherine. Yes, I also love everything uh, all to new. I gotta tell you, I started out as a big, huge fan and then I'm like, love to, uh, I need to have all the things. And Avril, you probably have some of these already in your uh, garden that have already come up. And Liz, this is a beautiful set. Suzette, yes, it's gorgeous. We're going to have some wonderful things. And Angie, hello. And 42 Rosie Rosie, thank you for sharing this. And if you share the link to this live stream while we're live today and let us know where you shared it, you'll be entered to win a $15 gift card to Altenew. And you might be able to take home this lovely stamp set, these beautiful, huge daisies. And there's the name of it right there. Uh, so it's so nice to have you all today. And hi, Ann Taylor. I see Ann there. And Nancy, hello. And yes, again, pleasantly warm San Francisco. It's not bad. It's getting nice out here. We're getting, we're hitting the 60s. And Stacy, you must also be hitting the 60s up there in New York. And Bethany, hello. Cece from Sweden. Hopefully you're hitting 60 degrees Fahrenheit, which is probably, oh, I'm going to do some fast calc uh, fast calculations it's got to be, what, 27 degrees uh, Celsius? All right. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, Avril. That was perfect. No, <laughs> I'm doing my best, doing my best here. Suzette, yes, I'm saying hello to everybody. And hi, Jesse from Kentucky. And yes, oh, thank you, Avril, for sharing this over to the fan group. Really, uh, thank you so much. And Connie, yes, love this set. Jeannie, yes, love my all new stamps. And hi, Margie. So what I wanted to talk about um, today, oh, CC, close, 15 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's right. You're up there. That's true. You're in Sweden. It should be a little bit. Um, yes. And I bet Avril, lovely day here in Cork. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's some more nice, Avril, there's some more nice uh, weather coming your way from uh, the East Coast of uh, the United States. So that's great. And Vicki, thank you for sharing this on Facebook. And if you also share this live while we're live, uh, you will be entered to win a $15 gift card to Altenew. And thank you, Margie. Um, California, probably some nice weather out there. So um, I wanted to talk today about different coloring media. And I would love for you to let me know in the comments your favorite Altenew coloring media. Is that the artist pan? Is that the artist watercolor set? Is that the artist markers? Um, what is it just, you know what, I just like to use pencils and shade them in. Um, do I like to use the woodless watercoloring pencils? Do I like to use the woodless coloring pencils? Yes, there are a lot of media. And I would like today, so I'd love to see what media you would like to do, because the paint of flower is all about kind of stretching how you color thinking about different media, how are you going to get those on a page, giving yourself some time in order for you to color. And we're going to, uh, we're going to be talking about that today and kind of getting in that time for, for coloring. Catherine, thank you for sharing this to Facebook. Jennifer, thank you for sharing. 
In blending absolutely does count. Absolutely, 42 Rosie Rosie. This definitely does. Ink blending does. And especially with all of the lovely uh stencils, all those um all of those those different stencils that Altenew is coming out with, it's making it a lot easier to go ahead and, and blend. And I have to say, Roxanne, who is behind the badge, hello, Roxanne, is already getting it up. I am going to be playing with one of the newest media, the Hawaiian Shores markers. And yes, I know I used this one time. Um, and I know I used this one time with you, but I wanted to plead them. And Nancy, I... Um, I will, you know what I'm going to do, Nancy, for you is I'm going to make sure if I don't get to those woodless watercolor pencils, I will definitely do one in the future. In fact, I'm going to write that down right now and I will make sure that I let you know that I'm going to do it. And I'm putting that down. Watercolor pencils. Absolutely. I will put that in for you, Nancy. All right. So yes, those markers, they're really, really great. And um, we will be, we're going to be kind of playing around. And it looks like everybody has kind of some different, um, diff oh, thank you, Joanne, for sharing this. And Vicki, I agree. I agree. Ink pads. I didn't think about them, but then definitely putting them. And Barbara, thank you for sharing on Facebook three times. Yes. Getting all those in there. That's awesome. All right. So um, I am going to go ahead and pull this down so that way we can take a look. And what I'm going to talk about today is how do you get yourself up for coloring? There's a lot of all new coloring media. What do I do? What, what do I use, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to go ahead and, and using that. And yes, Miss Tam, these markers, super nice. Um, I'm going to show you the project that I made with them. And I have to tell you, my friend, uh, Bridget Casey, who's also an all new educator, she said to me, Amy, you got to, when you do your live on this, you got to show everybody how to use these, these uh, markers, because if you hadn't have told me that you use the Hawaiian Shore markers, I wouldn't have believed you. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and turn this down and we're going to look at my mat and we're going to get on a little bit of coloring. So let me know. We're all talking about what is your favorite medium to color in. I love seeing what everybody likes to do. And for you, what is it that you love to do? Oh, I love. Yes, I agree with you, Catherine. I love to color. Coloring is so relaxing. I absolutely, it's just, it's just one of those things that, you know, when I have a little bit of extra time, I like to have in my day and just, you know, get a little time. I even, um, I even have bags of like things that I bring over and, um, and, and they will, um, you know what they, uh, Oh, I'm just, I'm reading Stacy's thing. Just had to jump over to YouTube. Facebook just ended the live. I have no idea why. And Rena, yes, let the coloring begin. Let's go. Well, for all of you who are here with me today, um, we are going to take a look at this beautiful daisy set and, uh, and we're going to, we're going to start coloring it with the coloring chores. So this uh, is my project that I made for the, um, for the blog hop that we had on the 22nd to celebrate the paint of flower. And this is something now for all of you who also love to color and you color in, you know, odd places like I do, like I colored this weekend. I can't show it to you cause I, um, it's a little bit under wraps, but I colored this weekend at soccer, at, uh, at soccer games. Um, this one I have to say, and I think my boss saw me do it. So I think I'm cool is I um, is I colored this at a school function. So if I have a meeting, um, if I have a meeting or if uh, I'm kind of doing anything, I, I always bring coloring with me. I have all these like little to-go bags and I and I and that's one of the things why I like the Hawaiian shore markers, why I brought it. So this was me literally at my school function, which was an open house is um, I had my little guys, they're already in a tray and I just stuck my paper after I stamped it. I just kind of stuck it in the back. And so that way I could make sure that it wasn't, that's me, that was it. This is all I brought with me. So, <laughs> all right, good Avril, I'm so glad. And Pam, absolutely, hello Pam, how are you doing? Um, thank you, yes. These, using your watercolors first and woodless pencils next, you got it. I'm gonna put that on there. All right. And Catherine and Connie, thank you for sharing. And again, if you, um, and, and if you uh, happen to share this while we are live, 
you will be entered to win a $15 gift card to alternate. All right. Um, okay. So this is what we're doing. And so I actually, these are water-based markers and I I've used them before, um, but I didn't use them as markers, like actual blending on paper. I used them by picking them up with water and then using them as a water coloring medium. And so that was a little bit different because these are a water-based marker. So I actually, and it's a little bit, I can't have to say this, but it's, it's a little bit tricky, but this is just Nina, um, 80 pound solar, you know, white paper that I have. And I stamp this, we're about to talk about black inks, but I stamp this in permanent black ink. And, uh, then I just brought it to, to work and I colored it and I blended with the markers. Now you have to be really, really careful about pilling. And pilling is when your paper fibers start to raise up and it, it you can't totally see it. And I'm gonna bring this up. I don't know if we can focus, but I went a little too crazy pants with the center of this flower and we have some wicked pilling on there. So I can feel it on there. But the rest of it, I was just really, really super careful about the color that I laid down. And so I did not experience that pilling. Thank you so much, Carmen. Yeah, and this was very fast to do. Um, this probably, well, the open house was about two hours, maybe an hour and a half. Um, so I, I colored it in about an hour and a half, which is pretty, I must happen to be a little slow when I do things. So that one is actually pretty good for me. And it, you know what? I don't mind the time because it's all right for me. Um, this is alt new permanent black ink and cap. Yeah. So, um, I have to say, thank you, Catherine, for bringing that up. And Catherine's bringing up this point about embossing and embossing is great because embossing gives you some raised edges. And so you can make sure that you're perfectly in line. And so you want to, what I wanted to have was a flat card. So this has absolutely no dimension on it whatsoever. So the only dimension that you see is I was able to get some shading in on the flowers. And that's what I was able to doing. Miss Tam, thank you for sharing this to Instagram. And thank you so much. Um, and my artistry, thank you for sharing to Facebook. And yes, you uh, also were a, um, a subscriber as well. Thank you so much. And if you happen to share this live while we're live, you'll be entered to win a $15 gift card to Altenew. So when I have a new medium like this and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to react and I'm like, you know what? There's like, there's so many blacks and I'm going to pull them all in. It, I always just go with permanent black and permanent black is kind of like my, my go-to when I don't know what the heck it is. And Lydia has an absolutely fabulous, um, she has a, fabulous um, video that she did uh, about a couple years ago now where she kind of took all of the blacks and she figured out, you know what, this is what you use these blacks for. This is what they're for. And so these are the four blacks that Altenu has. And I have my, my last one, this is the dye ink is jet black. Um, and it's in my little tiny cube. So that's why it looks so tiny here. And so jet black is a crisp dye ink, and this is a water-based ink. So if I were to use this water-based ink with a water-based marker, these two work way too well together, and that is going to um, mess up my lines. I'm not gonna, going to get nice crisp lines like this. It's not going to happen. So that one is only if you're going to use, I, you can use this with alcohol markers. You'll get a little bit of feathering, but um, I prefer to use the permanent black ink when I use alcohol markers as well. Um, but if you're using anything that is you know, this is really good with sentiments, a lot of different stuff, but this is just remind, just be mindful that this is, is water, uh, that this is water-based. The, um, pigment ink, the obsidian pigment ink, oh, love this ink, favorite black ink. Um, I know it's always seems to be sold out on the website cause I like want to buy a second pad, but, um, just put in that notification bell and you'll get it. This is oil-based and it's, um, so you can see that right there. It tells you that that is oil-based. And since this is oil-based, this and water will not react together. And so we could actually use the obsidian pigment ink with this. So I could, I could put this in. I like to use this more for um, sentiments because it is exceptionally crisp, 
So I'm still going to use that permanent black today, but this one could, could be a choice. Um, and you can use this when you watercolor. You can use this if you're using any sort of water medium to color in, uh, because this, this won't run, because that, that's oil-based. Um, this mixed media ink I could use, but this is water-based. Um, but it's like a water-based pigment ink, so it can be reactive with water. So that's why I didn't use the mixed media ink. These are delicious to blend with. Fabulous. If you if you have these mixed media inks, absolutely, absolutely fabulous. And thank you, Roxanne, for putting in that um, putting in that link. Oh, my artistry. I got to tell you, that obsidian ink, gorgeous for, for sentiments. Um, in fact, this is, I stamped the sentiment in this. It's just so, so super crisp. Absolutely so crisp. And yes, hi, Teresa. Um, yes, I've used the, I have the brushes and haven't used them yet. Yeah, these are really cute. These are cute. They're really easy to take on the go. And that's why I wanted to pull them out today. Um, oh, that's a great, thank you so much, uh, Vicki. Permanent black ink isn't bright enough. After you've colored, you can always restamp with obsidian. That's great. And you could definitely, um, if you, you actually don't even need to, if you're one of watercolor, Martha, and um, you're going to use the um, obsidian ink. You don't even need to clear heat emboss over that because this won't run. You just got to make sure that it's dry and it's going to take a little bit of time to dry because it is an oil-based ink. Um, and, and I do that all the time. I actually will, um, I will stamp my image and then I will let it dry with the obsidian and then I just watercolor on it because I know that that, that because it's your little science lesson today, because this is oil based, oil and water don't mix. And so this won't run. You can always clear heat emboss. And that's just in case if you're like, I'm a little nervous on it, but um, you can always do that. But uh, you really don't need to with this. And if you do, um, you know, if you do do the heat embossing, that just like uh, someone had mentioned before, it's gonna give you a little bit of raised images. And so if you're like a watercolor that, you know, you're not okay with the fact that like watercolor kind of runs everywhere, you definitely um, can use embossing because that's going to give you um, a little bit of edges. And those edges are going to allow for the water to stay uh, where you want it to go. But I know, you know, hey, you know what, watercolor, it's kind of, uh, you gotta, you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go a little bit on that one. All right. So what I have here is I actually have a little bit of a heavyweight. I'm going to try a different paper. Um, I have a heavyweight Bristol cardstock and Bristol cardstock just has a little bit, um, of like a plasticky coating on it. And it helps your markers to kind of blend a little bit better. All right. So I'm going to put this guy over on the side and I'm going to stamp this and I'm just going to stamp the whole image. Um, as it is, just so you can see the whole thing. So I'm going to use the permanent black ink. And this is a nice new ink pad. And I have everything in mini. So this is, uh, this is exciting to use. I find when I use my mini, and I think it's because it might be a little bit dried, I have to stamp it a couple of times. So this is my very, very first time stamping in this. And this is a crisp ink. So it's not gonna like get all over the place with your business. It should stamp out nice and crisp with this. So this is the permanent ink. And for, oh my gosh, can you imagine obsidian as a marker? I'm just gonna pause on that wonderful, fabulous idea, my, my artistry. No, it is not. It's only available as an ink pad. Um, and it's, it's, um, it does not have a refill. So I wanted to point that out, that it does not have a refill. Um, but I have to tell you, I've had this since it came out, which normally they have the, the ages on here. I've had this at least two years. I haven't had, because it's, it's so juicy and it's oil-based, I haven't had it dry out on me at all. Absolutely fabulous. And I use it a lot for a lot of things. You also, because of, for the obsidian, because the obsidian takes a little while to dry, you can actually heat emboss with it, which I did on a project last night that I was working on. Um, I actually do that. I know, I think a marker pen would be super fabulous. All right, so I just wanted to point out, can you just see how crisp that is? Look at the detail that we get. It's not too fat. And so this again is with the permanent black ink. And the permanent black ink is my go-to ink when I'm like not so, so, um, 
not so super sure about what medium I want to use. So I'm putting these next to each other. Now I changed the orientation on these. Um, so I just stamped it down the way that they had it there. And this is kind of the orientation that I did on my project. And I wanted to show you how I, how I blended these. And these markers, like I said before, if you use too much ink on them, you end up pilling. And that's where your paper kind of lifts up and you don't want that to happen. So you have to be really mindful about where you're putting down your light color and then how you're blending it. And so what I, what I did with these pens, I grabbed, so I'm just gonna do this first daisy. And what I did is I grabbed all of my analogous colors and these are all the colors that are similar to each other. And so I have here a Persian blue, I have a turquoise and I also have an ultraviolet. And so I grabbed all three of these colors because I know that these are gonna blend well together because of the fact that these three are um, analogous colors. So when I put these down, what I, what I did is I actually started with, and let me get a little bit close because I can do that now that I have the fancy camera here. Let me get a little close on what I'm doing. Here we go, we're zooming in, woohoo! Um, yes, <laughs> Catherine, I know Colorado, everything does dry out up there, I gotta tell you. And everybody who, if you happen to uh, see my live last time and I was asking about um, glasses, found them, got my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing today, woohoo! Of course, I'm gonna lose them in a minute, but that's all right, that's not a problem. All right, so I'm gonna start here with my darkest. And what I'm trying to do is I just wanna lay down a little bit of color. And because these are nice brush tips and these brush tips have like a little bit, they're, they're pretty firm. And I'm just gonna start to lay down just a couple of specks of color. And again, I don't wanna add too, too much color here. I, I don't wanna add too much with this marker because I'm gonna be laying some other colors on top of it. All right, and I'm just gonna go around all of these and then there's these little guys that are in the background and for these because you're going to have these other leaves laying on top of them my purple is going to go up a little bit higher so you can kind of see where the change is so here again it's this is the front facing and my purple is going to be a little bit on the shorter side and here again my purple's shorter but this guy is in the background so my purple is going to go up a lot higher. And that's my darker color. Same thing for here. It's just going to go up a little bit on the higher side. And so I'm going to keep going around in a circle. And again, I'm really being very careful. This guy's in the background. So I'm going to go right on up. This guy's in the front. This guy's in the front. And this guy is in the front and you get these kind of tiny leaves. So I'm just going around it. This guy is in the front. All right, so now that I'm just gonna show you that on the half of that. So I added that purple. Then I'm gonna add my other darker color, which is the Persian blue. And what I'm trying to do here is I just wanna pull that purple up a little bit. Now I'm not blending these because if I blend this, I'm gonna try, it's gonna be adding two much ink and that's going to pill my paper. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to go up just a little bit further. I'm still leaving that purple and I can always go back in if I want to, but I'm just going up a little bit higher. And like I said, I'm just being really super careful about making sure that I'm not going all the way down. I still want that purple to be visible. Got a little visitor, see if he can, hopefully he can go by. Um, and I'm just going right up. I want that purple to be visible, but I'm just going right up beyond that. Okay. And again, with these markers, really super easy to do. So you can see how I'm just kind of repeating the same thing on each of these petals. And here we go, this is my last one. Now for my um, lightest color, what I wanna do here with my lightest color is I'm now going to fill in the rest of my uh, petal. 
Now I want to leave a little bit of a white edge. And what that white edge does is it gives me a little bit more depth and um, it's going to allow the, these two to kind of, we're, we're trying to get like, I guess an ombre effect where we're going from purple to dark blue to light blue. And so for this one, so you see, I can still have that purple. And now I'm just going to bring this up and I'm trying to leave just a little bit of a white edge. And that's what kind of gives it that depth. And again, I'm trying my best not to go super crazy with the amount of ink that I'm laying down. Now, if you notice here, as I was doing this, and this is what happens to me all the time, is I'm like, oh yeah, that uh, leaf, that, that petal was behind this other one. So I'm just gonna go back in and just gently add in my purple there to show that there was that guy was in front of it. Here's my Persian blue. So I'm just going back to connect those in. And then I have just a little bit more depth. So I can go back in there. Yeah, and Catherine, hi, Beverly. Um, Sarah, thank you for sharing this on Facebook. And hello to you too. And if you share this uh, while we are live, you'll be entered to win a $15 gift card and the absolutely super duper fabulous Roxanne, who is behind the badge today, putting all those fabulous links in. Uh, she will be announcing the winner at the end of our live stream, in, which is in approximately 30 minutes. Um, so go ahead and get sharing and let us know where you have shared, that you have shared this and where it is that you have shared this to. All right. And then I got to tell you, I don't know. I know a lot of you put in that you love coloring and we love coloring on the go. And I have to say, it's one of those things. When I was at the soccer game this weekend, there I was sitting on the sidelines cheering on my, my child. And I had, wouldn't you know it, I had my little artist markers and I had my thing that I was working on, um, which was also a paint of flower. And I was, uh, I was coloring away. And I probably looked like the biggest uh, weirdo doing that, but I was happy because I get nervous for my kid. You know, I get so nervous watching them play. And uh, my daughter plays goalie. So that's even scarier because I'm like, oh, God, please don't let anything in. Please don't let there be any shots on goal. So I'm sitting there and I'm coloring and it's kind of helping my anxiety and uh, and then just keeping me occupied because otherwise I'm sitting there. It's a beautiful day. It's nice talking with the other parents. But uh, otherwise, I'm kind of sitting there like, uh, okay, I don't know what to do because I don't necessarily know everybody. And uh, oh, good. I'm so glad. Thank you, Beverly, for sharing. And Margie, thank you for sh sharing on Twitter. Really appreciate it. And uh, we put in before about your favorite coloring medium. Are you somebody like me that always has a bag packed with coloring? And you, um, you kind of have to take that on the go. I have to tell you that I colored this while I was... Um, at a school function. Yes, my boss saw me, it was totally fine. He gave me a side eye like, what are you doing? But uh, absolutely, that's what I have to do. I'm always kind of doing that. And hi from Canada, Maryland. I'm so excited that we are, that you're watching from our neighbors up north. I'm in Boston. So thank you so much for being here. And I know I'm just doing half of this because I just wanted to show you just a little bit of how it is that, that we blend this. And so I wanted to, um, let me just show you in just a second. So you can kind of see the depth that you get there. Oh, hi, Diane, also from Canada. And yes, New Zealand. And so, think, yes, work on cards while we're at the car shows. Cindy, I got to tell you, it's probably kind of boring at the car shows. I believe it. And Sarah, love these blues. Agreed with you. And I know. So Sarah, I got to tell you, um, I do have to uh, cull my collection a little bit. So when I, when I bring what I want to bring, I'm like, you know what, you know what I do is I kind of think about what do I always use all the time and what I, then I start bringing like, okay, I know I want this to be pink, but I don't need all the pinks. And so I kind of sit down and kind of think about, let me, let me try to bring something that's a little bit different that I haven't seen yet. And that's what, uh, that's what I try to do. So it also helps me to kind of break out. Of course, if you have the Hawaiian Shores markers, you can bring all 12, which is so great. Oh, Catherine, you bring it coloring camping. Oh my gosh. That's gotta be super fun by, um, by uh, you know, just sitting there. 
And hello from the Caribbean islands of Trinidad and Tobago. Hello, Donna. It's so nice that you're here. And Avril, these blues and purples, um, I wouldn't probably have put these together, but I just really like them. And they're the three ones that are, are great. In my artistry, favorite color meetings, watercolor pencils. Those are really great, super easy to use. And there's um, a water brush marker that I like to grab. And that's what I do my, uh, my coloring with. I do that as well. And yes, I'm with Sarah. I kind of need to decide that way. And you're not taking totally everything, but, um, but you're kind of bringing all those things with you. So let me play around. I'm going to show you this other flower that we're going to work on next. Um, and if I have some time, I might try to finish these up. And like I said, I'm kind of recreating my project here. And um, I want to focus on this, uh, this one here. So there's, an orange and a red. So the red is crimson that's in this set. So I definitely grabbed that. And I definitely grabbed the orange, which is Autumn Blaze. And Autumn Blaze is like orange. Like it is in your face orange. Like my brother, um, he drove a um, a Dodge Aspen, biggest car ever. It was it was bright orange with, uh, with white vinyl uh, inside of it. And it had a white vinyl soft top. He was so embarrassed, but that car was like this orange. And um, that Autumn Blaze is, I think, my favorite when I think of, of, um, of orange. Now, the yellow that they have in here, it, one is maple yellow and one is honey drizzle. And just to kind of show you the difference, and I have swatched these so I can get my swatch book. So this is the honey drizzle. Honey drizzle is a little bit, you can kind of see it, it's... um. I don't know. It's like greener. It's like a greener. And so the yellow, yellow to me is maple yellow. And so that's the one that I happen to, to always go with. And oh, good. I'm so glad that you busted out that coloring. It's sometimes it just takes like, you just need a little bit of a break from it. Um, I kind of go in and I think about doing it. And then I kind of go in and I just like, you know what, I just got to sit down. I almost look forward to soccer because it kind of forces me to actually get some coloring in and, and kind of get some different things down with that one. And hi, Julie, ink blending. Yes, love it. Thank you for sharing this on Facebook. And thank you so much for sharing this, Diana, Diana on Facebook. And uh, Rosaria, thank you so much for sharing this on Instagram. And Christine as well. Do not pick me though. Um, and Don, thank you for sharing this. And Catherine, Dodge Black, uh, Black Dodge Aspen. Wow, that is a serious throwback. That car was big too. Probably had like a five gallon tank on it. That thing took a, a lot of gas. So that was from the 70s. All right. So for this other flower, I want to again get that color. And when I have multiple flowers like this, I typically like to try to um, color them a little bit different be so that way it's not so totally like you're not like kind of having all blue. Um, so I'm trying to color them with a little bit different. And we're going to use the same technique where I'm using my darkest color, which in this case is the crimson. And I'm just kind of adding just a little bit. And you can see I'm just kind of swiping and making some swipe marks up here. I'm looking to see, so this petal is behind the other one. So that red is going to go up a little bit higher. And I don't want to put down too much ink. This is, it's not an alcohol marker. These, these Hawaiian shore markers, these are water-based and so they will pill. But if I'm really careful about what I put down, you can get some really, really super vibrant color uh, from these markers. And I'm just kind of going along and just kind of seeing what I what I have on this on on this flower. Where's my where's my shadow? Where's my darker colors? And I'm just going right along. And so um, that's the way I kind of color. I don't do one petal at a time. I typically will do well. It depends. In this case, because you have this daisy that has so many different petals, um, and the petals are typically shaped the same. I am going along and I am using one color at a time. And I can always go back over and go back through, but I really like the brush tip on this. I feel like I have a lot of control over what I'm doing. All right, oops, went over that one, that's fine. 
All right. So let me just get all these guys right here. Okay. And again, where it's a little bit behind, I'm going to have more red. And where it's a little bit uh, right out in front, I'm going to have less red. And you can see these little guys way, way in the back. They're mostly going to be all red. So I'm just kind of pushing them around. And again, because we had this, so this was the permanent black ink that I used. Um, because I have that, it, my, my, um, my image is not going to smear because that's going to work well with this water-based marker. So I'm going to come in with the orange. So this is that orange, uh, autumn blaze. And I'm just going to go right in again. And I'm not going to go right to the edge of this. I'm just going to bring that red just up just slightly. And I don't want to go too far because I do want to leave some room for my yellow. But that's all I'm doing is I'm just going up and I am just grabbing that red and continuing to pull it and continuing to pull it up. And this is how you can get through something really fast. And that's why I love this as kind of a... I have to say this has been my my coloring medium on the go. Uh, very like I've kind of reached for this again because it's already in the package and I can just put my piece of paper right in the package and just run out the door as my child is yelling at me that we are late for soccer. Um, that's kind of what I do. I also will bring this to work if I have like a little bit of time at a me or in a, in a meeting and um, I will bring this in. And I will color at a meeting. I've talked before about how my my boss gives me, uh, he likes to cold call us in meetings. In fact, I have one tomorrow with him. And he likes to cold call us in meetings. And so he sees that I'm coloring and he gives me, he cold calls me. But don't worry, I always have an answer and a response. I am listening. It's just, uh, you know, I like to keep busy and I like to keep my hands occupied. It helps me to focus and think. All right, so now I'm going to bring this up. And so this... Um, Yes, and Sarah, I have to say, absolutely, is that this is a really nice image because you don't have like, it, it's not overly complicated. And daisies, let's face it, they are not overly complicated flowers. They come in a lot of different colors. So if you color it something weird, that's totally fine. Um, and that's what's really nice about it is it's a really simple image. And I have to um, agree with Jess, Handmade Designs, listening while working. That's absolutely me. Um, and hello, Diana from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I'm with you, Beverly. Sometimes I just like to sit. I will put on a YouTube video and just watch somebody color because it's so relaxing uh, to do so. And I have to say, I have to remind myself that I'm all alive to, so I keep talking because sometimes you just get into the rhythm and the groove of it and you just kind of keep going. And that's what's nice. So I'm going to pull in this again. I'm using these markers. Um, they're the Hawaiian Shore markers. These are super nice because of the fact that you have this really nice tip. There is a bullet edge on the side as well um, that you can write with. But I just like the fact that they have this tip to them. And as I'm doing this, I want to leave myself a little bit of that white space. And that's what I'm trying to do. And it's the, it's preserving that little edge of white that what that does is it just helps to give a, to give that light, to give, to give that edge just a little bit of light. And if I go right up to the edge of that, that petal, it starts to kind of bring it down, starts to make it a little bit darker. And by, by preserving that little bit of edge of white, it allows for your a little bit more realism, I think. It shows that you have this, this contrast between dark and light and just kind of shows where that image is to where, where, where the petal is for what, for what you're coloring. All right, so you can see I did this one like really fast. I didn't, I didn't mean to color at all. I was only going to color half because uh, I wanted to show you guys one more thing. But um, I am doing this uh, super fast here. All right, I didn't do orange on that petal. So what I would do, once I have this all colored in, I would start to look for edges where it doesn't look smooth. I would look for places where it's just really, really different between all of them. And, um, and so that's what I would do, is kind of just look and see where else I need to go. And I, I agree, this, this paint of flower, 
this one's super nice and super easy to do. I even like, um, I have to say, it's always greenery for me that um, you really need that green because that's a neutral that's going to tone anything down and really just kind of make sure that your flowers kind of end up end up uh, popping up out of what you're doing. And this one is nice. It has these nice green leaves over on the side. And then we, I didn't even show you the sentiment. So let me take a second and show you guys the sentiments while I'm kind of have this out. So... Because I actually love these. And a lot, not all the paint of flowers come with sentiments. And not all of them come with like how many sentiments this thing has. It's got a lot. So I have my little flower. I'm going to do the centers for you guys. But I'm just going to take a little break for a second. Um, you have a limited flower person. Yeah, the Rose Tranquility Stencil. That one's beautiful. I just got on what the name of the stamp set is. Yes, let me, uh, let me put that right here so you have it. This is the paint of flower. And these are two gorgeous daisies. So you have celebrate in this really pretty script. You have big hugs. And then you have it's time to. And then you got every day. So you could do celebrate every day. Big hugs every day because that's important. Love and big hugs. That's cute. Um, your big day. So like celebrate your big day. For my special friend. Celebrate or big hugs for my special friend. Um, in style. So like celebrate in style. I think you might be able to have in style big hugs. I don't know. Um, let's celebrate new beginnings, celebrate new beginnings. And then you big hugs. I don't know where that you's going, but there's this little tiny you, you celebrate, celebrate you new beginnings. So you can kind of start to stack these up. And even if you want to, didn't want to use these two, you could do something for my special friend, your big day. Um, you can even do like love every day and get rid of this ampersand out of there. So you can kind of put it in every day in style. Those would be too. So I like these um, sentiments that come out of it. And I actually have been playing around with, and I think I'm freaking a couple of people out, but I've been playing around with um, writing my own sentiments lately. So this is actually really nice because you have this, uh, you have both the bullet edge and you also have this, um, this other, in fact, let me not do this on here and I'm going to get another piece of paper. Uh, and I've just kind of been playing around. My calligraphy is not super wonderful. So this is really just, yes, Stacy, this is good. This one's great. This one's great. These, these markers are awesome. Um, so I actually just, I learned cursive because I'm a little, you know, I went to a little old school and um, I practice that cursive and I try to turn it my best into calligraphy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I have um, here, let me just kind of put this out. So I'm not always straight. Normally I draw a line, but I'm just going to do this fast. So I just wanted to show that you can actually write with these really, really well. And even if you wanted to, I probably should have um, done this. I, I can do this in rainbow. I'm sorry, I, I can't like talk and write at the same time because I get I have to focus so much on what I'm doing. But um, this this tip is uh is really nice to write with all right i wanted to do i, I just learned a special funky s and now i'm gonna mess it up that's all right yeah i messed it up that's all right you're close all right, so we got that. So you can do that. And then if you want to do something like this, you have a bullet tip and you could do like so much. And so that's what's nice is that you can do it. Yeah, thanks, Avril. It's a little messed. <laughs> I can. And Anne, I've been trying to like do it more so I get more practice in it. And um, I can actually do it because you have all these colors. 
Um, you actually can do this and do it like in different colors as you go along. I didn't do it on here because I don't have enough space and I tend to write a little bit bigger, but this is really just my fourth grade cursive um, and I just try to fancy it up a little bit. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Um, that was a little aside. So let's get back to this flower. And I wanted to, um, I know I've been playing around with the Hawaiian brush uh, markers and I got about 15 minutes. I wanted to show you guys uh, one other thing. And I wanted to play around with um, my artist markers. And I grabbed some artist markers and I keep them on my desk when I play with them in like a little basket or a little something like that. Oh, thanks, Mavis. I appreciate that. Thanks, Vicki. I am, I know, I've been trying to, to write a little bit more so I get more used to it, but something that's, it's a little bit nerve wracking when I, when I do it. So let's, let's play around with a little bit of artist markers. So that was the Hawaiian Shores markers. This was me messing around with the Hawaiian Shores markers. And um, these are super fabulous. This is, I have to say, um, this is a great paint of flower. Love it because it is so fast and so easy to do absolutely wonderful. So let me stamp one more. And I'm also going to stamp this in the permanent black ink. And that's the black ink that we're using. And I'm also going to stamp this on um, Bristol smooth cardstock because I'm going to use this. And I think I'm going to do because I got 15 minutes, and you guys know, I like to push everything right to the edge of time. Um, I'm also going to stamp this on vellum. And I'm going to show you the Hawaiian Shores. I'm going to see. I haven't done this yet, but I, I have an inkling that the Hawaiian Shores markers might actually work on vellum. So I'm going to check on that in just a second. All right. So this is for my artist markers. And I'll just show you how the difference is in blending with them. And, oh, beautiful. Okay, there we go. One more. All right, there we go. So nice and crisp. That that permanent black ink really gets that to be a, such a nice crisp image. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp this down on here. That gives me, yep, yeah, that gives me enough space. Okay. And anybody have a preference for embossing powder? Or do you want to see platinum or do you want to see rose gold? Or do you want to see um, antique gold? Those are the three. Oh, and I have copper. Oh, God, this would look good in copper. I might do copper. <laughs> so you're, you're pushing. I know, right? I know. I'm pushing the edge of time. Oh, platinum. All right. Stacy's got platinum. Okay, we're doing platinum for you, Stacy. Copper would be pretty. Rose gold, antique gold. Connie, if you've been with me long enough, you know that for me it's antique gold because I didn't know how to spell antique when I, or I, mess, I messed up when I hit the button. All right, platinum. I'm seeing a lot of platinums. Okay, platinum we will do. All right, so let me grab my little embossing guy just in case because I will mess that up. All right, we're going to do a little platinum. All right, see, I got antique gold right there. <laughs> antique gold. All right, platinum it is. I think that this would be gorgeous in copper. If you don't have the copper, this is a gorgeous one to do. I did a, I don't know if it's out yet. I did, um, I did some metallics. Oh no, it's a different, different thing. I, I, I like to play around with metallics a lot and kind of see uh, what I can do with them. And uh, so I like, I like to play with them. So these are kind of like my three metallics. Also the three I own. I'll put it that way. And I own rose gold, which is gorgeous as well. All right. So I got some embossing ink and I did my best to clean that off, but I mean, everybody's got the embossing ink pad that has black all over it. I know. I feel like it's like a badge. It's like, you know, is what it is. And this, this stamp, it's a big, big stamp. So you do have to kind of put some pressure on it, but it does a nice job stamping down and you get a lot of detail for what, oh, and Beverly, yes, to rose gold. I honestly, I think for a minute there, I like, I, I think that's all I used for like a month. I was just using rose gold um, embossing powder. It's all I was using because it's a really, really favorite. Somebody else put copper up there. Yes, to copper. All right, and copper. 
Got a couple rose gold. All right, I'm going, uh, I'm going to check out some platinum because I think that's good. All right, so we got a random piece of paper from my drawer. Probably already had platinum on it. And I'm going to try some platinum. We could even do this in like multiple. Actually, let's do that. Oh, we're really going to mess it up today. Woohoo! Oh, you guys had me, uh, I just, I switched, totally switched gears. You guys are like, really, lady? What are you doing here? We're switching gears. All right, I'm going to try this uh, copper with the platinum. You ready? And just like that, you can get two colors. You mean it's not the spelling test? No, they uh, they they haven't had spelling. We, we were on break for a little bit, so I haven't had the last spelling. They did a little spelling bee, though, and Evan won the spelling bee, which was great in his school. And now he's like, where can I go and do, uh, and do a spelling bee for real? And I'm like, well, I think the Scripps National Spelling Bee is, is over right now. All right, so I'm really, really fast. And so since this is vellum, so we are being super quick about getting on here. And I, this is going right away like lightning. And uh, because it's vellum, I'm just moving it, moving it, moving it, and moving it. Fast, 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 fast. Not staying in one spot. Moving, 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 moving. Moving and grooving. Moving, moving, moving. So you can see um, when you have a big, big image like this, you can actually, um, even just like that, so you see how you get that um, change in there uh, with what it was. And thank you, Roxanne, for keeping up with me because Roxanne, I didn't I didn't put the embossing powder on my list they gave to Roxanne this morning. Sorry. Uh, but there it is. So I wanted to play around a little bit. So you guys know you can take um, artist markers and you can actually color on the back of vellum. And it looks gorgeous. So let's take a couple of, let's take some, uh, this is a warm and cozy set. So I'm gonna grab some oranges and let's grab uh, some yellows. And this is from Summer Afternoon. So I'll grab some yellows. And all I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna grab a, just a petal, just to kind of show you. So this is from the warm and cozy set. So when you start to color on the back, you really, really need to make sure that that color is, is like really dark because when it shows up on the other side, it's very muted. And that's how your, your color comes up. And yes, vellum, parchment, and looks, um, thank you so much. And um, it really is something that I love to do. And I'm just taking that, in fact, that was even Autumn Blaze, right? Nope, that was Firebrick. Uh, fire brick is the darkest color in the warm and cozy set. And because the um, the artist markers, because they're alcohol markers, they don't always like, they don't really sink into the paper. So once you start, like I took a light color and I put it on top of that really dark orange. And so I lost the orange because they kind of mix together on top of that paper instead of instead of one of them sinking into the paper. And so when you're coloring on vellum, but it's neat because you get this really like kind of marbled look. Let me put some white behind that. You get this really marbled look, which I think is really great. Elizabeth, thank you for joining us from Salt Lake. And yeah, this is, um, it's really super nice. So just if you're just joining us now, we're playing around with the paint of flower. Uh, these are daisies that we have, and it's a little set with two daisies on it. And we're kind of looking at different ways to color it. So first we were playing around with the Hawaiian shores. And then we were, um, now we are playing around with um, some artist markers on the back of vellum. And so I heat emboss this with a little bit of copper embossing powder and a little bit of platinum. And you can take this and when once you put that onto white paper, you just kind of tack that on the back and then your vellum can hang a little bit free and then you can see that color on there. So yes, my artistry, this is a super easy way. Um, I even find coloring on vellum to be faster than paper, if that's possible, um, just to let you know. And But that's the idea, is you put that nice dark in there, and then you can see that dark coming through. So now we can see that color. So I wanted to check and see if, 
these Hawaiian shores, how well they worked. The alcohol markers work really, really well on vellum because of the fact that they dry quickly because it's alcohol. And um, the alcohol in the marker dries really quick. But because these are water-based markers, they're going to, on vellum, they're going to dry a little bit slower. And so that's what I wanted to check out. So let me grab my autumn blaze. I'm going to grab a maple yellow. And let me grab my little crimson here. All right, so let me start out with this orange and we'll put it right next to this one that I did. Check this out. All right, here we go, moment of truth. So here's my orange. So you can see it still works on that. Looks really great. It does, Anne. I love it. It looks like this. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Hi, Jean from Florida. Um, we are playing around with some coloring today, messing around, always getting into trouble on Amy's Inspiration Station. Always getting into trouble on here, seeing what we got going on. So I'm going to take, so I, ha I, I laid down the orange first and then I did the crimson. Um, and I'm just kind of messing around with what's going to happen. So now I'm putting the yellow on top of that. Now these are not mixing quite like the alcohol markers do, where you kind of lose the color that you laid down beforehand. Um, this is actually staying. So when I put this on top, let me grab that white again. You can see that you're getting a color. That is, thanks Sarah, best gun drum. Um, that you can see that that it's a little bit more blended. So these are actually gonna blend. And now I'm gonna do the moment of truth here. Does not, it does not come off on my finger. So the alcohol marker is really super dry, but that Hawaiian Shores, did get on my paper though. Uh, that Hawaiian Shores, it just takes a second to dry, but that's uh, that's dry now. So I just wanted to show you that you can actually do this uh, with either one, which is really, really great to know. So I'm going to um, just kind of review what the heck we did today because we got a lot going on. Um, so we played around with the newest paint to flower. And these are absolutely adorable daisies. This is the project that we were working on. And this is with the Hawaiian Shores marker set and I love this marker set it's a water-based marker set and it's um it comes in 12 really really delicious colors and what we were playing around with today was how do you blend these how do you blend these on a piece of paper how do you blend these on a piece of paper without the paper pilling uh because that's always a fear when you're using water-based markers is having that paper pill and then, of course, what I love about the Hawaiian Shore markers, for those of us out there who are, you know, colorers on the go, because we always need to have something to do, this comes in its own little case. It comes in its own little tray. And I even just stick my paper inside of the case, and then I have it ready to go. And I actually colored this while I was at um, a school function. Uh, that's what I did. So the second thing I wanted to test was, well, what happens when you try it on vellum. And I love coloring on vellum because it gives you this really gorgeous ethereal look to your flowers. And um, it's very, very easy to do. I find it to be faster. So I colored this petal down here with artist markers. And then I colored this one with the Hawaiian shore markers. And that both worked out really, really great. You do have to make sure that if you're using the water-based markers on vellum that you let that dry because that's gonna move on you. Um, if you do use the artist markers, they tend to pull up color. So you're going to get a little bit more of a marbled look. But with the uh, Hawaiian Shore markers, you're going to get um, a little bit more of a uh, smoother look to them. So those are both of those. And of course, you can use them to write a sentiment. And I have to say, I agree with you, Beverly. It is a super cute case. Absolutely. And I hope uh, you guys enjoyed that. Let me pop on up here and say hello, take off my glasses here. And um, thank you so much for tuning in to Amy's Inspiration Station on the Altenew uh, YouTube and Facebook channels. And I am just really super uh, grateful that you are here today. I hope that you were able to get some uh, inspiration from us here on the, at Altenew and from me and uh, maybe a little bit of information about some black inks, about some different coloring media. And just thank you so much uh, for being here. And I hope that you um, go on and you get a little bit of craft on today. That would be super great. 
And um, I'd love to see what you do. We have our Alta New fan group where you can share your creations or even on our Alta New Facebook, you can uh, share what you do there. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, I hope that you have a fabulous day and say huge thank you to Roxanne who was behind the badge today. And thank you, Roxanne, for all the links and the lovely links that you put in there so we could do a little bit of shopping. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. And thank you for tuning in to Amy's Inspiration Station and um, for Altenew for uh, crafting your life. Thank you. <laughs>